Hello everybody, this is a video about box and whisker plots. Please print out the note that I included in Google Classroom because you'll be filling it in as you as we go through this video. Please throw a date and uh, on your sheet, you don't need to write the title because it's probably already there, uh, but the learning goal for this is to use box and whisker plots to, to represent data in a certain way and understand how they can be useful. Okay, so a box and whisker plot, and the purpose of these is a way to display data on a number line, as you can see right there, by organizing it into four specific sections. Okay, and these sections are divided up roughly by these five points on the number line. So the minimum value is the smallest value, of course. Um, the maximum value would be the largest value, of course. Median, you found previously and are, should be familiar with from our measures of central tendency. So that's the middle value when the data is in order from largest to smallest or smallest to largest. It doesn't matter too much which way. Um, the lower quartile is the median of the lower half. So you're still finding a median, but of the lower half of the data only. And the upper quartile is the median of the upper half of the data only. Okay, now the word quartile, hopefully you will note, hey, that sounds a lot like the word quarter. You would be right. It is very similar to the word quarter on purpose. Um, so quartiles are the four sections that make up the box plot. And each quartile represents 25% or one quarter of the data. And we'll talk a little bit about more about how you would see that as we go. The interquartile range is just the range between the lower and upper quartile numbers uh, as we defined up above, okay? Which is going to be the length of the box that you will draw, okay? So the box is that interquartile range, that's the size of the box. All right, now that our definitions are a little bit over with, let's look to how we actually do this and apply this. Okay, so these are some resting heart rate numbers. Um, and because this depends a lot on medians and on numbers being in order, it's very important that you put these numbers in order first. Okay, so we've got them all in order here, um, and there should be 12 of them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yes, please be careful when you're doing medians uh, to make sure you don't miss any of the numbers or accidentally have one vanish. Um, now, Filling in, we'll fill in the information on the side here before we tackle actually drawing the graph. So the minimum, simple, is just the bottom number there. The lower quart, uh, yeah, so let's actually, before we go to those numbers, take just a quick look at what the uh, medians would be and therefore what the quartiles would be. So because there's 12, we're looking at a median that would be right there, okay, with six numbers above and six numbers below to make 12 total numbers. So our median will be the number in between these two, meaning 66. Again, you can find that by adding 64 and 68 and dividing by two, that will get it for you, but the median is 66, and I'll take that off in a second. But our lower quartile, we want the median of these bottom six numbers only, all right? And that means we want the number between 58 and 60, which is uh, 59, okay? And then the upper quartile is going to be the median of those six numbers only, so the number right there. So that means, why is this being difficult? Uh, so the lower quartile was 59 as we as we found out, the median was 66, the number between 64 and 68. Upper quartile is 74, right in there. And your maximum was 92, which again, you can just read off of there. You can all kind of see that, I hope. Now, when you're making a box and whisker plot, these five numbers, you're going to want to make a dot for them on your on your timeline, sorry, timeline, on your number line. So when you're getting to the number line, first let's look at labeling this thing. You do not have to start at zero, thankfully, unless that's where your data starts and that's a useful number, um, but you do need to go up consistently. Okay, so in this uh, number line, I've gone up by five every time, so that works just fine. Okay, and then you can see I've got dots 
for our box and whisker plot for each of these five numbers. Okay, um, so we've got our minimum right here. Our lower quartile is at 59. I realize it's sometimes a little hard to tell just exactly where the numbers are, but do your best. Um, our median is 66. Our upper quartile is 74. And our maximum is 92. Okay, so as you're drawing it, you can see the box goes from upper, uh, sorry, from lower quartile to upper quartile. Median gets its own box in the middle, and then you just draw a line up to the maximum, line down to the minimum. All right, and we'll answer a few questions right down here that helps to understand a little bit more of these things. Okay, so what is the range? That again is maximum minus minimum. So 92 minus 50, which equals 42. What is the interquartile range? Remember, as we defined above, that's upper quartile minus lower quartile. So 74 minus 59 to give you 15. So that should be the size of your box as well. It should be 15 units from start to from uh, beginning to end there. So it's another way to check. So what percent have a resting heart rate of less than 66 beats per minute? So our median is 66 beats per minute. That means that 50% are below that. Okay, so 50% of our the numbers in our data are below that number. Okay, what percent have a resting heart rate of no more than 74 beats per minute? So 74 is our upper quartile. That means we want to know how many are below that. Okay, and that would be 75% of the numbers are below that. Okay, so 60, or sorry, 50% were below our median, and then 75% are below that. All right, so what percent have a resting heart rate between 50 and 59? That's between our minimum and our lower quartile, and that's 25%. Okay, so it's very important to note that each of these sections between the dots represents 25% or one quarter of our data. So one quarter of the numbers are right in this area, another quarter are in this area, another quarter are here, and another quarter are here. It doesn't matter how far apart the dots are. What matters is how many pieces of data that we have are between them. Okay, so three of them here, three, three, and three to make our 12 total pieces of data that we had above. Okay, back to our questions. What percent have a resting heart rate between 66 and 92? So that's between our median and our maximum. And if you take a look there, so we've got one quarter and two quarters of our data, which means we have 50% total of the data points or the, or the people involved in this survey here or uh, whatever it was, resting heart rates, um, were between those two beats per minute. Okay, and I feel like there was a little more that I wanted to go over. So let me see here. Oh, okay, so very quick analysis of box and whisker plots. Nothing too tricky, uh, but when you're analyzing them and having a look at them, um, just remember what the dots represent. Okay, and again, this is on the second page of the notes that I sent out, okay, uh, towards the bottom. Um, so what is the median score? Again, that's the line right in the middle. So the median score is 80 because that's where it is over the number line. Uh, what percent of the students score between 70 and 85? So you can see 70 and 85. And remember, between each of the dots is 25% of the information we have or 25 percent of the students in this case so if we have 25 percent here 25 more percent here that means 50 percent of the students are between those two numbers 70 and 85. okay how many students scored between 45 and 85 that's between the minimum number and our upper quartile okay so that's 25 percent 25% and 25% to get a total of 75%. Okay, and if Kate got an 87, how did she do compared to the class? Okay, so 87 is above the upper quartile, so that means Kate is in the top quartile of the class, the top quarter of the class, and that means that 
she scored better than 75% of her class. Okay, and there's different ways to refer to these quartiles. Sometimes um, this first one, this would be the first quartile, second quartile, third quartile, and fourth quartile. Sometimes this would just be called the bottom quartile and the top quartile. There's different ways of talking about it. You may have noticed the word quartile is not typically in common usage, but it's in lots uh, in statistics and studies you will run into that phrase. Okay, so please uh, go over the homework uh, and let me know if you have any questions uh, during one of our meetings this week or through email or classroom. Thank you very much.